section 7.5 is on inverse trigonometric functions. We're going to do it over two days. Uh, the first one's pretty well my least favorite lesson in calculus. I don't know why, I just find it really nitpicky and not too exciting. But maybe, you know, I'm not going to let it bias me. I'm still going to try my hardest here. Maybe you're going to like it. So a quick reminder of what inverse functions are. Inverse functions reverse or undo another function. So, for example, if your function was x plus 2, if that was your original function, then the inverse would be x minus 2, because that undoes what this function does. And remember that graphs are reflections of each other over the y equals x line. So this dotted line here is y equals x, and if we had some function like this, then the inverse would look something like something like that. I don't think I've nailed it, but it's supposed to be reflection over that line right there. You know all that from grade 10, 11, and 12, pre-calculus. Okay, so guess what we're going to do, everyone? We're going to draw the sine graph. Hey, think we can do it? We've done it over and over and over in this chapter. So sine graph goes through 0, 0, has a maximum at pi over 2, back to the midline at pi, and if we go down this way, has a minimum at negative pi over 2, back to the midline at negative pi. So I'm going to quickly draw this. Now, can you see what would be the problem about doing the uh, inverse function of this? This fails the horizontal line test. A horizontal line will go through, through this like in three places right here. So if it fails the horizontal line test, what does it mean? It means that the inverse is not a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the domain of this. Rather than looking at this whole function that goes on and on infinitely uh, up to positive infinity and down to negative infinity, we're just only going to look at a piece of this function. Any ideas what would be a good piece of the function to look like so that it passes the horizontal line test and in which case it will be a function? How about from here up to here? In that section right there, any horizontal line is only going to go through that in one place. So if we take just this highlighted part, the inverse will be a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the domain. And we're going to say the domain goes from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. In terms of the range, well the lowest y value is negative 1, the highest value is 1, just like it was before. Okay, so if we draw the inverse now, the inverse sine, which is the same as arc sine, what happens to domain and range? They flip around, so our range will now be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and our, range, our domain will be from negative 1 to 1. So I'll mark that point, those points on here, 1, negative 1, pi over 2, negative pi over 2. So for example, it, here it goes through the point negative pi over 2, negative 1. So now it's going to go through negative 1, negative pi over 2. 0, 0 is still 0, 0. And instead of pi over 2, 1, it's going to be 1 pi over 2. And this is a bit hard to, uh, to determine. I'm just going to draw it. And it's going to go kind of like this. This is the inverse sine or arc sine graph. And just a reminder, if we have inverse sine of x, and if we say that's equal to y, that is equivalent, it's the same thing as saying that sine y is equal to x. And we're going to write something else on the other side of this box later. Okay, let's do the same thing again, but with cosine. So first of all, we'll start by drawing the cosine graph, uh, 0, 1, midpoints at pi over 2, minimum at pi, and midpoint negative pi over 2 and negative pi. I'm going to draw that, something like this. We have the same problem. It fails the horizontal line test, so our inverse is not going to be um, a function. Notice we can't use the same uh, restrictive domain as before. If we went from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, it would still fail the horizontal line test. So we're actually going to restrict it from here to there, from 0 to pi. So again, we're going to restrict the domain and it's going to go from 0 to pi. The range will again be from negative 1 to 1. So again, domain and range will switch. So it's going to go from 0 to pi for range in the inverse. It's going to go from negative 1 to 1 in the domain. So uh, it goes through 0, 1 here, which means it goes through 1, 0. And it goes through 
negative pi over 2, 0. So this will go through 0 and pi over 2, which would be halfway between 0 and pi. And then it goes through pi and negative 1. So we'd have negative 1 and pi. Those are our points. The curve would look something like this. Another reminder for you, if you say arc cos or inverse cos of some amount equals y, then what that means is cosine of y, must be some angle, cosine of y equals x. Okay, one more to do, it's the tan. Remember tan has asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. It goes through 0, it goes through pi, it goes through negative pi, and then we have our snakes and uh, electric fences. So it's going to look something like this. And we can draw this bit of it. And we can draw this bit of it here, something like that. And again, if we're looking at the inverse, it is not a uh, function, fails of the horizontal line test. Let's restrict the domain again pretty obvious this time what the best way to restrict it is. Why don't we just restrict it between these two electric fences, asymptotes, so from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. What's the range this time? Well these go down forever, now down to negative infinity. This goes up forever, up to infinity. Domain range switch when we do inverse, so negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 for range and negative infinity, infinity for the domain. The other thing that switches is the asymptotes. If we had a vertical asymptote at negative pi over 2, now it's going to be a horizontal asymptote at negative pi over 2. And of course, same with the uh, positive pi over 2. So there's our asymptotes. It's going to go through 0, 0, because uh, switching 0 and 0 still gives you 0, 0. And then it's going to look like this. Something like that. Inverse 10 of some amount x equals the angle y. Uh, is equivalent to saying that tan of y is equal to x. So we're going to calculate all these values here. We're going to do sine first, then cosine, then tan. Uh, so remember, when we're talking about sine, we just saw that we're going to restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I'm just going to write that there. So which quadrants is that? That means it's just the first and fourth quadrant. Okay, so if we want to know inverse sine of root 3 over 2, uh, first of all, it's positive, so what quadrant is it? First quadrant, um, should I put like a, a 1 there to show it's first quadrant? And which angle is it that has a sine value of root 3 over 2? It is 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. So I'll say that the angle is equal to pi over 3. Next one, you got to start in this inner bracket. Sine of pi over 4 is what? Sine of pi over 4, that's 45 degrees, it's pi over 2. So now what we want to know is, what's the inverse sine value of pi over 2? Well, pi over 2 is positive, so again, we know it's going to be the first quadrant. And when is it that you have an angle that's equal to pi over 2? Well, it's when it's 45 degrees. It's pi over 4. Well, this seems a little silly. And the first few will seem a little bit silly for, in this case, so pi over 4. Okay, same sort of thing here. Uh, so we're going to have sine of, now, what's inverse sine of negative 1 half? Hmm, wait a minute, negative one-half. Which quadrant must we be talking about? It must be the fourth quadrant. So which angle, what's the reference angle if it's one-half? That's 30 degrees or pi over six. So if it's in the fourth quadrant with a reference angle of pi over six, and since we want to keep our angle between negative pi over two and pi over two, we can use the negative angles. So if our reference angle is pi over six and it's in the fourth quadrant, you know what we call that? We call it negative pi over 6. Rather than calling it 11 pi over 6 or whatever it would be, uh, we just do that negative angle. So now this is our new question. So now we need to know what's the sine value of negative pi over 6. Which quadrant is negative pi over 6 in? Fourth quadrant still. We're still working in the fourth quadrant. So is sine going to be positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? Sine's going to be negative. And what is the sine value of pi over 6? Because that's what the reference angle here is, is pi over 6. The sine value of pi over 6, which is the same as 30 degrees, is 1 half. So you get negative 1 half. Now, again, you might be saying, like, what's the point of this? Pi over 4, pi over 4. Negative 1 over half, negative 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2. Uh, well, look at this one, and you'll see that it's not always what you think. So the first thing we have to do in this one is take sine of 7 pi over 6. Which quadrant is 7 pi over 6 in? That's in the third quadrant. 
So that's okay because this restriction here is just to do with the inverse sine and we're just talking about sine here. So we're talking about the third quadrant which means that our value in the third quadrant is going to be negative. So what we have is sine, inverse sine, of negative. Now 7 pi over 6 which means it's down in the third quadrant. It has a reference angle of pi over 6. So that's 30 degrees. How much is sine 30? 1 half. Okay, now what we have to do is find out what's inverse sine of negative one half. Well, we just did that up here. I'll do it again quickly here. Now we have to look, use this restriction, remember. If we're doing inverse sine of negative one half, we're only looking in one of these two quadrants. It has to be the fourth quadrant. And since it's one over two, we have a reference angle of 30 degrees or pi over six. Since it's in the fourth quadrant, it's gonna be negative pi over six. So what you'll notice is that we can just take this answer here. If we do inverse sine of sine or sine of inverse sine, you'll have exactly this argument as your answer as long as the argument is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I'm going to write that in here. I don't recommend you memorize this or anything. I actually kind of recommend you do what I just did with all those steps. But if you are interested, inverse sine of sine x will just be equal to x for any values that are between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And similarly, if you want to know what sine of inverse sine of x is equal to, that will also equal x as long as it's between negative 1 and 1. So let's move on to cosine now. I told you this is a bit annoying. Uh, so cosine, we are restricted from 0 to pi, which means we're looking at first and second quadrant when we do the inverse cosine. When we just do cosine, you can do anything you want, but for inverse cosine to keep it a function, it's just between 0 and pi. So it starts off not too bad here. Uh, inverse cos of negative 1 half. Well, we're talking about a negative value, and uh, it's negative in the second quadrant. So we know this is the second quadrant. Uh, which angle is it? So this will be our reference angle. Which angle is it that has a cosine value of 1 half? That's 60 degrees or pi over 3. So if you have a reference angle of pi over 3, how much is the actual angle? Pi minus pi over 3. So pi minus pi over 3. That's 3 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 would be your answer for this. Okay, next one, cosine of 5 pi over 6. So no restriction here. 5 pi over 6 is in second quadrant again. So again, we know it's going to be a negative answer because in the second quadrant, cosine's negative. 5 pi over 6 has a reference angle of pi over 6, and that's 30 degrees. So how much is cosine of 30 degrees? It's root 3 over 2. So we get negative root 3 over 2 here. Now, inverse cos, we're restricted from here, 0 to pi. When is it that it's going to be negative? That's when it's going to be in the second quadrant. So again, we're looking at second quadrant here. And what's the reference angle if it's root 3 over 2? The reference angle is 30 degrees, or pi over 6. So in the second quadrant, with a reference angle of pi over 6, you got to go pi minus pi over 6, which gives you 5 pi over 6. Exactly the same as the argument here. It's very similar to what we did here. I'm going to give the same thing here, I think. Next one, inverse cos. Uh, we're restricted to just this, these t just this domain right here. It's a negative amount, so we're looking in the second quadrant again. Now, here's the other thing. You don't usually look at it, uh, think of it like one over root two. At least most of us don't. If you rationalize this, this is root two over two. That might look more familiar to a lot of you. So, second quadrant, root two over two. When is it that equals root two over two? Reference angle: 45 degrees or pi over four. Since it's in the second uh, quadrant, that's pi minus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. So what we're looking for is what cosine of 3 pi over 4 is. Okay, now again, we're just going to get the exact same thing. 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant again. So we know our answer is going to be negative. Reference angle, pi over 4. What's the value of cos of pi over 4? Root 2 over 2. So you get negative root 2 over 2, just like you started with here. Again, this probably seems really repetitive and unnecessary. Here's the one that will give you trouble if you're not careful. 7 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant. 
So this is fine, we're not restricted here because it's not inverse. Third quadrant, cosine is negative, and the reference angle is pi over six. So cosine pi over six, that's 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees is root three over two, and it's gonna be negative. So we have negative root three over two, and now we wanna know what inverse cos of that is. But here's the thing again. When we're doing inverse, restricted, we're restricted from zero to pi. So which quadrant must, must we be talking about if it's negative? Not the third one anymore. Now we must be talking about the second one. So in the second quadrant, what's the reference angle if it's root three over two? Root three over two is when it's 30 degrees or pi over six. So you see the reference angle is the same. The difference is instead of being the third quadrant, it's in the second quadrant. So if it's in the second quadrant, pi minus pi over six equals five pi over six as our answer. So back to this page and kind of similar to what we did before. Inverse cosine of cosine x will equal x if it falls between zero and pi. And cosine of inverse cos of x will equal x if it falls between negative one and one. So again, I don't really recommend, recommend you memorizing that, but be aware. Okay, last one. We're gonna do 10. We saw up above that we're gonna restrict 10 between negative pi over two and pi over two, just like sine, which means we're looking at first and fourth quadrant. So inverse 10 of negative root three. So we're restricted to these two quadrants, and since it's negative, it must be in the fourth quadrant. Okay, what's the reference angle when it's root three? Root three is when it's 60 degrees or pi over three. So pi over three, don't go two pi minus pi over three. Remember it has to be between negative pi over two and pi over two. So it actually turns out, it's actually easier than that. It's just negative pi over three. Uh, tan pi over four. Pi over four is 45 degrees. Tan of 45 degrees, 45 degrees is one. So actually what we have is inverse tan of one. Now we're doing inverse tan, so it has to be one of these two quadrants. Which one is it if it's positive? It's in the first quadrant. Which angle has a tan value of one? It's 45 degrees or pi over four. So our answer is pi over four. You know this is gonna be negative root three over three, but we'll do it anyway. Inverse tan. Got to follow the restricted domain. It's negative, so we know it's in the fourth quadrant. Reference angle, if it's equal to root three over three, well, that's when it's 30 degrees or pi over six. So what's the angle gonna be? Remember, you're gonna use your negative. It's gonna be negative pi over six. So now what we have to find is what's tan of negative pi over six. Negative pi over six is which, which quadrant? Quadrant four again. What's the reference angle? Pi over six. In the fourth quadrant, tan is negative, and tan of pi over six, or tan of 30 degrees is root three over three, just like the argument we started with. You know this one's gonna be different. This is the one you have to be careful with. So, tan three over four, which quadrant is this? Second quadrant. You see why it's gonna be different this time? Because second quadrant is outside our restricted domain. So that's fine, we can do this because this is just tan, but it will mean that we're gonna end up with a different argument here. So second quadrant, what's our reference angle if it's three pi over four? It's pi over four. In the second quadrant, is tan positive or negative? It's negative. So we're gonna have negative uh, pi over four as a reference angle means you have a value of one. So what you wanna know is what's inverse tan of negative one? Okay, now we're doing inverse tan. We have to either use the first or the fourth quadrant. Which quadrant is if it's negative? It's the fourth quadrant. See how it changed? Yeah, it's gonna be different. And what's the reference angle if it's uh, one here? It's pi over four, that doesn't change. So what does that mean the angle is if it's in the fourth quadrant and has a reference angle of pi over four? It's negative pi over four. Not seven pi over four or whatever, because that doesn't fall in the, the domain here. It has to be between negative pi over two and pi over two, so it's negative pi over four. Uh, finish this off by writing uh, inverse tan of tan x will be equal to x if it falls between negative pi over two and pi over two, which was the restricted domain, and tan of inverse tan x will equal x for negative one to one,
And there you go. So not the most important lesson, I would say. A little bit annoying. Um, hopefully it makes sense. There